one that can take care of this is our Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll go back to normal again. If we go back to the beginning, remember Moses received commandments and laws to follow. Jesus Christ gave us commandments and instructions to follow, and never with the purpose to break them, but to keep them. We must never be afraid of anything that's happening, neither abuse of the situation and the freedom that our Lord Jesus Christ gives us. Let's respect our authorities and stay focused with our eyes on Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, lead us on this service today, Father, here at Highland Avenue Baptist Church. And allow all those people that are seeing us through uh, Facebook Live and these transmissions, Father, that for them to receive the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom that only comes from you. And Father, help us to be sensitive to your voice and help us to uh, obey you and follow you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk to you about our decisions will affect for good or evil. That's on Hosea 4, chapter 4, verse 6. And I want you to open your Bibles with me. Just follow me along. Verse 6, say, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because... You have rejected knowledge. I also will reje reject you from bring, being priests for me. Because you have forgiven the law of your God, I also will forget your children. When we read this word, we must remember that we can never blame anyone for anything that's going on in our lives and in our families. God gave, gave us the freedom of choice for us to choose good or bad. And he gave us the Bible, his word, to follow those instructions so we can have a, uh, live a life that, to the fullest. So we must remember to be obedient to his word, first of all. See, obedience is the evidence of the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us, and operating in us. John chapter 14, verse 23 clearly says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Now, this is a promise that we are going to be living with the Father. We're going to be in fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, three in one. But that's only, that's only if we follow him and we love him. He says, if we love him, the evidence is going to be that we are going to keep his word. We're going to be obedient. That is the reward that he, he, we are going to be one with him. Now, it keeps on saying also that disobedience is the evidence of being influenced by an evil spirits, spirits or demons. People don't like to hear this word, but it's the truth. The Bible is clear that we are not supposed to take or add. We can find that, find that in Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter, the last two verses. We cannot add or take. So it says here on, on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Once, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Now, now, we need to look at this. This is God's word. And he's not talking to the world. He's talking to his children. He's talking to his church. He said that before we became Christians, we used to follow the world. We used to do those same things that the world does. But when we came to Christ, we are no longer the same. We are not supposed to walk the same, be the same, or even speak or talk the same. And, and there are still some people that, that are Christians that are, are, are following the, the waves, uh, the desires of this world. And, and the Bible clearly is saying here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, that this is because these people are following the desires of this world. They are, they, they are being influenced by demons. Nothing else but that. 
That's what the Bible says. So either we believe God or we don't. John 14, verse 24 says, He who does not love me, he makes it clear. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which, which you hear is not mine, but the Father who, who sent me. Now Jesus says, I didn't make up this world, my Father did. God the Father made up this world. These are his commandments. These are his instructions. And if you love me, you will show it. If you don't love me, you will not obey me. So there's evidence that you don't love Jesus. You're not a follower of Jesus when you are not following, when you are not being obedient to his word. John 15, verse 5 and 6. I am the mind. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as, as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If God is saying, if the Bible is saying it, then who is man to change that? The Bible says, if you are living in disobedience, you die in disobedience, rebelling to the word of God, rebelling to God himself, you are going to end up in hell. I know, I know many preachers, candy preachers, have said differently. But don't go what people say, go by what the Bible says. What is the Bible saying? Where do you want to spend eternity? You know, the, the test will come finally. Some, one day we're going to be standing before the judgment seat of Christ. So we need to read this. We need to pay attention. We need to be obedient to God's word. God's warnings to his people and the consequences for ignoring his word or changing it. Hosea chapter 4. Verse 1 through 6. God already know everything. He knows everything. And all the disobedient will not escape his punishment. He knows who you are. He knows who I am. He knows everyone. And he knows everything. But look at what the Bible says about these things. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord, you children, children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There's no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Now, now this is what God's saying here. He, he's looking upon the land, and this is what he sees. This is what he sees. He says, there's no truth or mercy in us. Or knowledge of God in the land. We keep ignoring the word of God. We don't read the word of God. But we do so many other things. That we don't have time. And then the, he says, you keep swearing and lying. Killing and stealing and committing adultery like, nothing's, like nothing is wrong. They break all the restraints, all the rules. With bloodshed and bloodshed. We don't care who, who, what happens to what, whatever. We don't care about the consequences, he's saying. But he's saying it clearly. And verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. You children of Israel. You people that call yourselves, yourselves Christians. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. He's talking to us. Because of God's people. Disobeying. And sweet candy preachers, anguish and hurting will come upon the earth. Verse 3 to 5. 
Now look at what he's, who he's, he is blaming. Let me read that again. Because of the disobedience and because of those messengers, candy messages they give, evil hurting is going to come upon the earth. And he says here in verse 3 to 5, Therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will, there will waste away with the beast of the, of the field and the birds of the air. Even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with the priest. Therefore you shall stumble in that day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. Now look at what he's saying clearly right here. There's going to be time where we won't be able to mourn our dead people. It's like it's happening today. These things, it's like it's happening today. So many people that got sick with that virus, they got taken away to the hospital. If they didn't heal, we never get to see them again. They die and then they burn. Other places of this world, like Ecuador and other places, those people are falling dead on the streets with that virus. And people are not picking them up. They say there's no ambulance, there's no doctors, there's nothing. And then what they do is burn them there. So they don't become contagious. So they burn their own families there. The people are getting burned in the streets after they fall. Punishment, judgment, whatever you want to call it, has come up on the earth. Nothing can stop this except God. We need to go back. We need to repent. We need to humble ourselves. We need to confess. And we need to make a change in our lives. A change and a transformation that will glorify the Father, our God. We need to start walking in the way that will please God. So his wrath can stop. Yes, God has given us the choice that we can, you know, he's given us the choice that we can make a difference if we only humble ourselves. We can change the direction we're going. We can get back with him again. Because of the sweet candy preachers and the lack of reading the Bible, many will not know God. And there will be anguish and hurting consequences that will even affect our children. Verse 6. I'm reading Hosea 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Look, he's saying here why they are being destroyed. They are being destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Why people are not reading the word anymore. And they are believing just anybody that says something. They go to, a, they hear a preacher and he says, oh, that sounds nice, without even checking if it's right or not in the word of God. You need to get back to basics. You need to go back to the scriptures and really examine what is being preached out there, what is being taught. God never promised to, you know, he was going to make us rich. God said he was going to save us from the wrath. He was going to save us from hell. And we, one day we were going to live with him in paradise. That is the promise. He was going to renew us. He was going to restore us. So verse 6 clearly says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because, he says, because you have rejected knowledge. In other words, it's being taught. It's being preached. But we make going to church a second or a third choice. If we have time, we go to church. If not, we don't go to church. We don't attend services or Bible studies. Right now, we cannot. It's all we have is, is, is uh, internet right now to get those messages out there. But when it's time to go to church, when, when we have the time to go to church, which is going to come again, but before, 
people were just making going to church a second or third, you know, in their priorities. It was not important. And he clearly says he's going to forget about our children, meaning our children are not going to know God. Why? Because we took it upon ourselves to skip our Sunday school and services because we took our children uh, uh, to uh, sports. We would took them to events. We took them other, where, uh, other places instead of being in Sunday school. Instead of uh, leading them, guiding them. By example, and to follow Jesus by going to church first and listen to the message and, and, and obey the message, follow the instructions, they are following their own desires. Our children are doing this. Does that mean we, we cannot do anything else? It doesn't mean that. What God is saying, he has to be number one first and then everything else will be added. It means you can do everything else once you do God number one in your life first. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. I mean, these people were exposed to the word of God, but they decided, they decided upon themselves to ignore it. Now, God is bringing a revival and removing all false worshipers. They already have the reward. God is bringing now, pretty soon, a revival upon the earth. The cost has been high though. There's a lot of hurting right now upon the earth because of this virus. But it's the purpose to humble us, to remember there's only one God and without him we can do nothing. Today, I mean, you, you look in, in videos right now, you see uh, the whole city, people, presidents, worshiping God, raising their hands, singing praises to the, to the Lord, you know, humbling themselves. And that's the idea of everyone, the whole world, to humble themselves to God so we can have peace upon the earth again. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 32 to 37, look at what it says. It's, it's like it's happening now. Prophecy. Verse 32. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil is going forth from nation to nation, and a great whirling tempest is rising from the remotest part of the earth. And those slain by the Lord on that day will be from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. They will not be lamented, mourned over there with expressions of grief or gather or buried. They will be like dung on the ground, wail, you shepherds, and cry and roll in ashes. You masters of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and your dispersions have come in full and you will fall and be broken into pieces like a choice vessel. The shepherds will have no way to flee, nor the masters of the flock any way of escape. Clear says we are going to be accountable. It's coming the day we are going to sit on the seat of judgment. But it's even happening right now. The God is calling out all those uh, sweet preachers, those candy messengers, messengers that have changed God's word, that have made so many promises, and that's not what God said to preach. God told us to preach salvation. God told us to give him the mess his message to change lives, to transform lives, to worship him, and not to worship ourselves. God is calling all these people. And this scripture, it's like, it's like it's happening right now. We, we see, like he says, we see our people fall. We see uh, people that are getting sick and, and with the virus, and they're falling dead. And they're not getting buried. Family members are not able to see them ever again. They just see when they take them away, they take them to the hospital. Many of them die. They never see them again. And then they get put in a refrigerator here in the States. And then they're going to get burned. But in other parts of the country, people are falling in the streets. And right there where they fall, they burn them. They don't pick them up. They burn them right there. 
and then they just pick up the ashes. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a family member of yours that will be taken away and you will never see him again or her? The only thing that can change this is our Lord Jesus Christ by being obedient to him, humbling ourselves, repenting, confessing, and really make a change in our lives with our attitudes. Right now, we, we act like we, we deserve everything. We don't deserve nothing, the Bible says. But God is lovable. God wants to help us change if we allow him to change us. We can protect our homes, can protect ourselves and our homes just by coming back to Jesus. Just by confessing to him that we have messed up, we have disobeyed. Many people say, well, I've been good. I don't have to not kill anybody. I'm a good person. Being a good person is not going to take us to heaven. Only if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we got to change our attitudes. We have to speak words that will edify, that will lift up people. Not being accusers. Not being complainers. But just humbling ourselves with the Lord. Verse 1. Chapter 1 and the book of Isaiah, verse 18 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18 to 20 says, verse 18. Come on now, let us discuss this, says the Lord. Though your sins are bright red, they will become as white as snow. Though they are dark red, they will become as white as wool. Well, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be destroyed by the words, by the swords. The Lord has spoken. Now he says, look, you got a choice. You have to choose life or death. And he says, come on now, let's discuss this. He says, I need you to come if you really want to repent. If you really want peace in your life. If you really want salvation, I need you to come. That's the first thing. He says, it doesn't matter how much you have sinned. It doesn't matter how much evil you have done. I got forgiveness for you if you really mean it. It doesn't matter how bad they are. I will return peace. I will restore your life again. I will restore your family. I will restore everything for you. Verse 19 says, if you choose this, you will be able to live that abundant life. You will be able to have peace again. You will be able to have peace and life. On this land, I will heal it. I will heal the land. And I will give you a joyful life. Verse 20 says, but if you refuse, if you choose not to, and you choose to rebel, you will be destroyed by the swords. The Lord has spoken. He clearly says, it's up to us. We can have eternal life and peace by being obedient, by repenting. Or we can be destroyed along with our families. And this can go on. It all depends on us. I decided to protect my home. So I will submit to the laws of the land. But overall, I will submit to my Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he's asking. Be faithful. May God number one. When the church gather again, make sure you choose the church. And his services. Make sure you read the word. Make sure you, you accept his word and be obedient to his word. Not only read, but be a doer of his word also. If you choose this, you will have eternal life. I invite you to pray with me and ask God into your life. Just ask him to forgive you, to forgive us all so we can start over again. Let us pray. Father God, I acknowledge today, Father, that I have sinned against you. I have been, I've been, I've been, I've been a rebellious to your word, not obedient. I've been following my own instructions, Father, my own desires, and forgetting to follow yours. Forgive me, Father, I did not know. 
You have spoken to me clearly today. Now, help me to be sensitive to your voice. Be obedient to your voice, Father. And not only obedient to your word, a listener, but also to be a doer of your word, Father. And an encourager unto others, Father. Thank you. Save us from this virus. Save us from this evil world, Father. And help us to live that abundant life that you have promised, Father, as we follow your instructions. Help us to produce a change and a transformation in our lives that will also help other people as they see us, that they will see Jesus in us. And if there's anyone out there, Father, that does not, has not accepted you as their personal Savior, I pray that they will, you will come unto their lives, Father, that they can say to us, Father, they can repent, and they can ask you into their lives, Father. We pray all these things, Father, and we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day.